Welcome to the Virginia Tech Intramural Sports Volleyball presentation. We are happy that you are joining us this season and look forward to working with you. In this presentation, we will be going over captain responsibilities, intramural policies and procedures, volleyball game rules, and more. We would like to thank Fox Ridge Apartment Homes as our sponsor for their generous contribution and making sure that we deck out all of our intramural sports champions in the fabulous Intramural Sports Championship t-shirts. In this presentation, we will be going over roster management, protests, sportsmanship, volleyball rules, game sign and equipment, and other policies. As captains, it is your responsibility to share this information with all teammates. Volleyball sports rules can be found on our website at recsports.vt.edu, and all game time information can be found on Fusion IMs. All intramural volleyball games will be played in the War Memorial Hall gym. All championship games will be played at McComas Hall. A team must have at least four players to start a volleyball match. Please show up at least 15 minutes before your scheduled game time so the games will be ready to start on time. Please be aware that there are parking restrictions on the drill field until 8 p.m. Please make sure you park in designated spots only. Practice balls will be available for checkout from the scorekeeper on site using your Hokie Passport. If a team does not have enough players by game time, the grace period will begin at the beginning promptly at the started time on Fusion. The grace period lasts for 10 minutes after the game was scheduled to start. A forfeit will be called if a team does not have enough players. Both teams will forfeit if neither team has enough players. If a court is delayed and not ready because of the preceding match, the grace period will be delayed. Teams that forfeit must pay a $20 reinstatement fee online. For games that were forfeited during the week, Monday through Thursday, this fee must be paid by 9 a.m. Friday of that week. The fee for games forfeited on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, are due by 9 a.m. the following Tuesday. Failure to pay this fee in a timely manner will result in the removal of the team from the league. Remember to always show up for your games unless you are contacted directly by the intramural office. In order to populate your team's roster, you need to make sure each individual player is eligible. There are varsity and sports club restrictions imposed for intramural volleyball. All varsity volleyball players may not play intramural volleyball. Varsity volleyball players will be eligible after they sit out one semester after their final game. However, non-volleyball varsity athletes are allowed to play. There can only be a maximum of three non-volleyball varsity athletes on each volleyball team. If sports club volleyball wants to participate in intramural volleyball, there is a maximum of three sports club volleyball players allowed per team. All former slash current professional athletes are ineligible to participate in intramural volleyball. If you believe that a team is using an ineligible player, you may file a protest. There will be no game limit set to your team's roster, including the playoffs. Players may be added to the roster on Fusion IMs before or when they check into a game. Intramural sports memberships must be purchased before each player is added to the roster. You can register at recsports.vt.edu under intramural sports. In order to be eligible, players may only play on one men's, women's, or co-rec team. At the conclusion of regular season games, players will be locked on the team that they are on. Players cannot be removed to be added to another team after the third week of games. Protests. There are two types of protests that intramural sports participants can utilize. One is for ineligible players. The second is for rule misapplication. If you suspect there is an ineligible player playing on one or more teams, you may file a protest at any time throughout the season with the sports supervisor. They will look into the situation with the details that you provide. The second, which is rule misapplication, must be made prior to the restart of a play. So what this means is that if you are going through the game and you feel that the official misinterpreted one of the rules, you must immediately ask for the official to stop the game so that you may file a protest regarding that rule misapplication. 
a sports supervisor will be called onto the court for you to plead your case about the rule of misapplication and they will look into the situation immediately. If you want to file a formal protest, they may be submitted um, in 135 for Memorial Hall by 12 p.m. the next day and a $10 protest fee must be paid at that time as well. If it is found that the protest is correct, the fee is refunded. If it is found incorrect, that $10 fee is lost. Sportsmanship. As stated in the intramural sports mission statement, our purpose is to provide exercise, recreation, and fun for our participants in a relaxed yet structured environment. Therefore, a team sportsmanship rating system has been developed to encourage proper sporting behavior during all intramural sports contests. Throughout round robin play in your leagues, teams must have a minimum average sportsmanship rating of a 3.0 on a 5 point scale in order to be eligible for playoffs. Teams that receive below a 3.0 average for any game during the regular season may be required to meet with the intramural sports coordinator or the graduate assistants to be eligible for the next contest. If a game is not completed due to any sportsmanship related incidents, the sportsmanship rating earned will stand regardless of whether or not the game is official. During playoffs, teams must have a sportsmanship average of 3.0 or better in each game in order to advance. If a team receives below a 3.0 average in any of the playoff games, the team will be removed from the playoffs and may be replaced by the opposing team. If neither team receives a 3.0 rating, both teams will be removed from playoffs. After each game, teams are given a sportsmanship rating by the game officials, scorekeeper, and sports supervisor. There is a 5-point rating scale from excellent sportsmanship being a 5, 4 is good sportsmanship, 3 is average, 2 is poor, 1 unacceptable, and a 0 means the team is disqualified and they forfeit the game. All volleyball matches are played with teams of 6 players with a minimum number of players to start being 4. A contest consists of best two out of three games with rally scoring. The first two games will be to 25 points, win by two up to 27 points, with the deciding set being to 15 points, win by two up to 17 points. All volleyball matches can be ended with a best two out of three sets. If two sets are completed by 25 minutes after the scheduled start time, both teams will have the option to extend the game to a best three out of five sets. At this point in the game, both captains have to agree to either end the game or continue playing to the best of three out of five. If playing best three out of five, the first four sets are played to 25 and the fifth set is played to 15. To begin the game, a coin toss will determine which team gets to choose to serve, receive, or pick a particular side of the court. A new coin toss is performed before the third game if necessary. Teams will switch sides of the court after each game. Each team is allowed one timeout per game and they do not carry over from game to game. Substitutions may only be made in the server position and the substitute must play a full rotation which includes a serve. We do not recognize Libero's position in intramural sports. All walls, baskets, backboards, and supports are out of play, and replays will be determined at the discretion of the referee. Ceilings are considered in play if the ball stays on the side of the court belonging to the team that hit the ball, provided it was not the team's third hit. No player may enter an adjacent court in order to play the ball. If there are only four players available at the start of the game, back row restrictions only apply to the player in the serving position. If a team is playing with five players, then there must be three players in the front court. Now, let's turn our focus to the serving rules. The server shall have five seconds after the official's whistle to contact the ball for service. If after releasing or throwing the ball for service, the server has to allow the ball to fall to the floor without being hit or contacted. If this happens, a reserve will be allowed. Servers are allowed one reserve per term of service. 
The server may serve from anywhere along the back of the out-of-bounds line and the service is considered good if the ball passes over the net between the antenna with or without touching the net. When playing the ball, a team is allowed up to three successive hits to play the ball over the net and onto the opponent's side of the court. Any player that makes contact with the ball outside of a block shall be considered as having played the ball. The ball may be hit with any part of the body as long as it rebounds cleanly after contact with the player. Players may only have successive contacts with the ball during a block or after any first contact off of a serve or hand-driven ball. Only players in the front row at the time of service may attempt to block the ball after the initial serve. No player may contact the net at any time with any part of their uniform or body with the only exception being their hair. For example, no fingertips, forearms, hands, chest, or back may touch the net. The result of such an action would be a point awarded to the other team for net violation. A player may touch the floor across the center line with one or both feet, hands provided a part of their foot, feet, or hands remains on or above the center line. However, if a player is in contact with the center line, they may not make contact with their opponent. Contacting the floor across the center line with any other part of the body is illegal. Now, let's talk about some COREC rules. In COREC, all substitutions must be male for male or female for female. To balance the court, there must be no more than a difference of plus one in gender numbers in order to start. That means two for two, three for two, three for three in terms of the gender ratio. In addition, the serving order and positions on the court at the time of the service shall alternate between male and females. Once the ball is in play, if the ball is hit more than once by a team, both genders must make contact with the ball before it crosses the net. If a correct team plays with five players, they lose a point any time the male slash female service order is disrupted. We understand that many intramural participants are competitive, but it is the responsibility of every player to play within the rules of the game and maintain a proper sporting behavior. Any issues with sportsmanship will be dealt with by the supervisor on duty. Please note that the supervisor on duty reserves the right to impose disciplinary action on players, teams, or fans if warranted. Lastly, please keep in mind that all volleyball contests will be governed by the National Federation of State High School Association rules unless we have specifically adapted a rule for our campus, in which case the rule will be outlined in the rules sheet posted on our website. All games will be played in War Memorial Hall. Please remember to bring plenty of water to drink. If proper equipment is needed, you can check out these items with an intramural supervisor. If a different ball wants to be used, both captains have to agree in order for that ball to be used for play. All jewelry is required to be removed prior to the start of your match. In the event where a participant has to wear medical alert jewelry, show the supervisor so they can secure it with tape. All religious jewelry must be pre-approved in the intramural sports office prior to coming to participate in the game. It is required that teams have a light and dark colored jersey for intramural volleyball. Jerseys must be a similar shade of color across the entire team. The intramural program will not provide jerseys or shirts for participants. Opposing teams must wear different colors. The captains have to decide which team will wear alternate colors. If each side cannot agree on a color, the game will result in a double forfeit. In addition, if one team does not have enough jerseys of either color, this will result in a forfeit. Game status as it relates to weather and playing conditions is determined by 4 o'clock p.m. daily by the intramural sports staff. If games are canceled prior to 4 o'clock p.m., the intramural sports staff will notify team captains. After 4 o'clock p.m., game status is determined hourly. For the most current game status, participants are encouraged to follow the Intramural Sports Twitter and Facebook page. Twitter is at VT Intramurals. Our Facebook page is Virginia Tech Intramural Sports. Our website is recsports.vt.edu forward slash intramurals. You may also call our weather hotline at 540-231-6060. Unless circumstances permit, games canceled during regular season play are not rescheduled.
If games are rescheduled, team captains will be notified and the game changes will be visible in the My Team section of your Fusion IM portal. All playoff games postponed or suspended due to inclement weather will be rescheduled and teams will be notified as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and listening to this presentation. If you have any more questions, please visit directsports.vt.edu slash intramural slash policies, or you can email us at imsports at vt.edu. If you have any more questions, please call us at 540-231-8297. If you'd like to come to the office, stop by at War Memorial Hall in room 135. We want to thank you for your interest and participation in our Virginia Tech intramural sports program. We wish you luck, have a great season, and thank you for helping to make our intramural sports program one of the finest in the country. Please also visit any of our sponsors, Domino's Pizza, PK's Bar and Grill, or Fox Ridge Apartment Homes. Thank you and have a great year.